Please welcome to the stage one of my great friends. She's all the way from a small town just outside of Cape Town called the United States of Hrabal. Hrabal. Give it up and go mad. It's the beautiful Tracy Lee Alamo. <laughs> How's it going? Hi everyone! Hi. I'm so glad to see girls here today. That's very really important to me. Whenever I come this way, it's a bit nostalgic for me because I always feel like I'm coming back home. And I remember as a little girl growing up on the farm. Now you must understand that it was like a farm town. It's where they make the appetizer that's up to the table for you. So if anyone wants to about her going say, oh, that's what they make appetizer. Yeah, that's what they You were the one. Okay. Um, so, basically, growing up as a little girl in a very small farm town, I must say that from a very early age, I knew exactly what it was that I wanted to do. And I want to say something and tell you something that I believe that each and every one of us have that thing inside of us when we are little. And we know what we want to do. There's something that ignites joy in you. And I know that every child in the world, even if it's the most outrageous thing that you've ever thought of, knows what they want to do in life. And as a young girl, I knew from a small age that I wanted attention. Basically, that's why I'm in the entertainment industry. It's just that I wanted attention and I wanted to make people laugh and I wanted to make people feel good around me. So from a small age, I used to do like a little show in the living room. I used to force everybody to come and sit in the living room and come and watch me perform. And I don't care if I sang off key or if what I said didn't make sense, I was having my little concert. And I know that the parents here, you know when your child is so happy to show you something, you know. I feel like really that you should just sit and listen, even if it's nonsense, even if it doesn't make sense to you, just listen to them. Because what they are trying to do is they're trying to express themselves, you know. And anyway, so growing up in Chicago, you know, by the time it was 1994, I was born in 1980. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I'm 38 now. So I'm an 80s baby. So I grew up, I was born into an apartheid era. And then in 1994, when South Africa um, found its democracy, I was 14 years old. And by the age of 14, my area, which was a little plus dorby, all of a sudden, all of the people came streaming in because of all the factories in Karabao. And it basically became a township. But let me tell you something. When that change happened to Harabao, it really taught me something very precious that I really regard uh, a special trait or uh, it's something that I'm really proud of myself that I have. And that is being able to adapt quickly. So it doesn't matter in what kind of setup I am, demographic I am, um, suburb I am in job or whatever, I'm able to adapt. Adapt meaning that I'm still true to myself, but there's something about me that other people are like. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I'm trying to say? Anyway, sorry, I'm a really bad public speaker, but I'm going to push through this. <laughs> Very beautiful back there. Thank you for your smile. Um, so, so that, that that is the thing that that what Krabau um, turning into a township really taught me is how to the, the diversity and how to embrace diversity of a culture that is innately a South African culture. I don't feel like I identify as as much with race as I do with culture. So I really identify with being colored and being from a place in the Western Cape. Listen, people in Cape Town, they don't come from a Boas Cape Town. Huh? When I say 
Oh no, 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 I'm from Cape Town. Then they're like, no, you're not. You're from the plus. But then I'm like, but if you phone there, then it's still 021. And that is the code for Cape Town, so speak to the end. <laughs> Anyway, okay, let's fast forward to when I was at school. It's like Jason just really pointed out everything that I wanted to point out. I feel like you just really just, <laughs> I might as well just not talk because you like got all the points that I wanted to bring up. The fact that when you know as a child, as a young person, that thing inside of you that makes you excited to grow, to, to grow up or to grow up, but to wake up every morning, I don't care what it is whether it's singing, whether it is making people laugh, whether it is dancing, whether it is helping in your community, whether it is doing hair, doing makeup, um, cleaning somebody's yard and doing that for extra pocket money over the weekend. I don't even know if you guys do this. Do you guys still get pocket money? Pocket money? You say pocket money? Allowance? Something like that. It's that thing that is in you that just makes you so happy. And I just want to say that you can really, really, really be anything that you want to be as long as you're not hurting yourself and others around you. That's always my kind of like motto, right? So let me tell you about my journey to Joburg. It's been 13 years now. So in 2004, actually in 2003, I ended a, I ended a competition. I don't know if you guys know what it is. You got a idols, right? Yeah. Just joking. <laughs> idols. And I go to Joba. And I go to Gold Rift City. And I, you know, I cry out and I sing. And I'm sitting there. And now you must understand. Everybody knew my father. My father was a school principal. So naturally they knew who my family was. But then when I started singing, everybody knew Tracy. Nee, ons gaan vir Tracy vrouw by die bazaar te kom sing. Ons gaan vir Tracy vrouw by die kerk se pakkers te kom sing. You know? So everybody knew who I was. So I was like walking around, you know, not cocky or arrogant, but I was just, I knew that I was a talented girl. And everybody knew my name. And then when I got into idols and I go to Gold Reef City, all of a sudden there are 500 other people who sing, and most of them are singing better than I do. So it was like a wake up call. Because I was like, uh, okay, now I'm just going to sing. But still there was a little voice inside of me that kind of wanted to become very really like, okay, you know, it's, you know, I'm not going to go with anybody knows me, you know, So I go to idols. I get kicked out in the top 60. You guys can say, ah. <laughs> get kicked out. And what a wake up call. I'm sitting on the plane, flying back to Cape Town. And I'm crying. And I am crying because in my head, that one opportunity was my only opportunity. So I get off the plane. My father picks me up. I'm dealing with people who have this bias. I'm dealing with people who are so sick. 
go to school with me, who I now have to say, sorry, but you are a And that even fake me, that fake the depression even more, because this was just too heavy for me, right? And then the year goes by, and it's my birthday, the 6th of April, uh, 2004.
for help. But in the same way, I want to say, ask for help and show the people who you're asking help for how excited and serious you are about what it is you want to do. You want to do a catering story, then you go and ask a catering company if you can help or if, if they can help you rather. And then what, the, what do they want to do? They want to see samples, right? So you bake everything that you need to bake, make everything that you need to make. So that's, that goes the same with in my situation. I had to show these people that I was serious. And my showing them that was me coming to Joel. I was going to make my own way to Joel, but I had to come up and I had to go with them. So I go up. And if you go outside, you see there's a white Toyota Tess with a number plate CEO. And CEO is the registration of the home. So that car brought me here. And I drove up with my ex fiance. Drove up. And the deal was, I don't think it was, but the deal was that he was going to come up as well and we were going to make this fabulous life together. And then he decided, nah, it's not for you. And I said, well, nah, then this engagement is not for me. So I love him. God bless you. But I have to go and fulfill my dream. I have to go chase my dream. I get to job of one of the people that I met. The first people that I met who I hold so dear to my heart is Bianca the Grinch. And she's from me. She's from my house. I love Bea so much. She was one of the people who really, really liked her. You know, she's just like with open arms. She was like, oh, I want to do all that show. And as a Cape Tonian saying that, as a Cape Tonian saying that, it is, it's really something. I just want to tell you guys, meeting fabulous people like the Goliaths there, all of them sitting there, when I decided, or when Jason discovered me, I always say he discovered me. He says, you sing really nice, but you're also funny. So, so let's turn that into, and that is how I got into comedies. Thank you for that, Jason. Good people, those people over there. You have to understand the people that you are um, dealing with, the people that you hang out with, the people that you mix with. Make sure that those people have the same dream are there because they want to better themselves and they are striving for something. Then that eventually rubs off on you. And for the young girls, I just want to say something. 
A man is not gonna save you. You have to save yourself. I'm so serious about that. I'm so serious about that. It's nice to have someone in your life who you love and where you have a, a you know, a very mutual, beautiful and mutual relationship. But do not fall into the trap of social media that is being portrayed to girls now where it is that you have to back that thing up and you have to do this and your hair must be so long and your, your waist must be snatched and this, that and the other. To catch a man, don't fool yourself, ladies. Don't fool yourselves. My father used to say to me, because I never used to like waking up early, and he's like, you're going to have to marry a rich man one day. And then I said to my father, Daddy, I am going to be a rich man one day. <laughs> Guys, I really hope that sharing my story with you today helped a little bit. I'm really sorry. There's so many things I wanted to say, but I'm going to be in the car now saying, <laughs> But I'm so thankful. Thank you to Daryl. Thank you for um, Turning Point and uh, Space for you for inviting us. And I really hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much. I really want to come back and talk to you guys some more. And yes, Jason. Thank you. Hi, I'm going to give a round of applause for Tracy Lee Oliver, everybody. She's the most fine and is now here. This is my favorite part. I wanted to just do this anyway. Like, ask me questions, man. Okay, so, so I'm going to allow uh, some questions some questions from, uh, from the people. Um, but but I, think that, I think that you should express the views of many opportunities in the moment uh, where you create a determined point. Uh, and I think, that, I think that that's, you know, for me as a, as a tech guy, Whenever I listen to kind of a, a, a small town to big city success story, uh, the, the stories are always similar in the sense that a lot of people see you now where you've done a lot of things. You just got back from uh, you just got back from Germany, uh, touring, a, touring a play, like your life is crazy. I follow you on Instagram and I'm always just seeing like nice, nice, nice right? things. I don't like because. My fiance doesn't like me to like too many things, you know. What I mean? <laughs> yeah, he knows what I'm teasing, I'm teasing. But but I think I think my, my, my point is is that a lot of people forget the journey. They forget uh, when they see where you are now. They don't kind of put the the one plus ones together uh, and take into account how many times you failed. And I think the difference between a successful person and a non-successful person is a successful person kept trying every time they failed. They kept getting up and going back for the thing that they love. Uh, people who are not successful gave up after the first try, the fifth try, the hundredth try. It doesn't matter when you give up. If you give up, you are allowing yourself to be unsuccessful. Uh, what type of motivation, if you were to kind of sum it up and, 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 and express in your turning point, what is the most important thing, the one thing that you would never change about your journey? Well, the one thing that I wouldn't change, everything. Everything? Everything I wouldn't change because everything that I've gone through had led up to this point right here where we are sitting here. Right now. I love <laughs>
Nobody gave you your talent, so nobody is responsible for your talent, except for you. If you think that the world owes you something, forget about it. Don't even try it. It's alright. Because you will always you will go through life thinking like that. If you understand that your talent is yours and it's your responsibility, that changes everything. So when you realize that, that where your accountability and your responsibility lies with yourself, then, then everything changes. It's almost it's almost like a, like a conspiracy for it's almost like a not a conspiracy, but in that sense the universe will conspire and open up places or God will open up places for you where you can then go and move freely. And once that happens then nobody can take it away from you because when opportunity is for you, it's for you, nobody can take it away from you. I love that round of applause everywhere. <laughs> Okay, we'll, we'll take a couple of questions from you guys. Uh, any questions you have based on what you've understood and heard and you know, what, what Tracy shared. Um, I'm happy to bring the microphone down to you if you feel like... Uh, hi, my name is Zineda. Hi. From Algorithma College. Um, how did you decide about your forte? That's if you have a forte. You specialize in you know, voice artists, like actress, medium. Like she wasn't, she wasn't trying to make excuses about how good she was. It like I felt like when I watched her, she was very really proud of the fact that she was world class and internationally, you know, sound. And and I like that applause because it it's it, I think that that particularly the communities that we grow up in, we are we are taught subconsciously that we're not good enough. We are taught subconsciously that you're not allowed. Yeah, but also you're not allowed to say I'm the best. You're not allowed to say, I'm amazing, I'm great, I'm beautiful. You're not allowed to own those things. And sometimes you don't have to say it, you can show it. And, 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 and it, 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 it spoke volumes. Um, I feel like at the end of the day, the producer is recording. So if you want someone, if I want to play someone, I'm going to invite you to my show. And then I'm going to show you. Because I'm, it's not because of what I'm doing, it's because I want to show
just be very careful who you surround yourself with, the kind of boy, boyfriends and girlfriends you surround yourself with. Um, there is something in your face that says this is not a good idea, or this doesn't feel like. It's, it's an instinct man. And if you just allow that instinct just to lead you now and again, it'll do so much for you. So just have the gift of seeing if someone is, their intention is good for me or not. I think that's a, I think that's a good thing. Gift also comes from experience. Yeah. Yeah, I've been hurt so many times with people. For the, for the younger, for the girls especially. Um, just be very careful who you surround yourself with, the kind of boy, boyfriends and girlfriends you surround yourself with. Um, there is something in your life that says this is not a great deal, or this doesn't feel like right. it's, it's an instinct man. And if you just allow that instinct just to lead you, It'll do so much for you. So that's just. Uh, <laughs> we'll take, we'll take final question for Tracy from the gentleman at the back of the room with the uh, with magnificent beard. We laughed so loud at my joke. I love it as I speak today. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and the English man. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed because that was such a wonderful joke. <laughs> Struggle with confidence <coughs> issues. I know many of us who grew up in townships, other townships specifically, have just like hold it, just hold the mic around the scope. Try again. Is that better? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, did you did you struggle with confidence issues? Um, and, and what advice do you have for some of the younger members in the world about the? Okay, so I've been I've been having conversations uh, about this topic specifically with friends of of late. Um, they, the, the, the time that I grew up in, guys, we grew up in the so hard. You would go crying because your friends were teasing you about something, something, something. And for me, that wasn't, I mean, it wasn't bullying because it was still your friends. But they would tease you and like, you know, say, yeah, what kind of jeans is this? You're you really wearing a, is this, is this a skinny jeans? Yeah. And then, So for me, I grew up in a time when people really, like, I mean, I was forced to build character. I was forced to, and I mean, it's not a bad force, it was a good force, it was like a, a nudge, rather, um, to, to have self-confidence because you guys must understand, as colored people, we can tell you if you don't sing right. Like, we're not going to make it, we're not going to praise you for singing nonsense, sorry. <laughs> I was going to say the okay. um, But it's that thing where if you say nonsense, if you say kaka, then we're going to let you know. And I think that is the thing that actually, because of the time, but that is the time that I grew up in. Times now are very different with um, cyberbullying and stuff like that going on, and, and, and kids, hey, kids um, overseas as young as 10, 11, uh, killing themselves because of cyberbullying, because of mean comments and stuff like that. Um, sometimes you need to put your phone down. Oh, read a book. You know? Sometimes you need to put your phone down. Go, go have a conversation with your mother. Go have a conversation with your friends. Go have a conversation with your Oma. You still had an Oma. I never had an Oma. I always, whenever I see all the people that could be my Oma, they're my just goes. But I mean, go and have a conversation with someone about something that might matter to you. Just put the phone down.
But, 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 John, no, no, and I, and I like to, I like to be just realistic and honest. Yeah. But what Tracy is saying is absolutely true. Do both as hard as you can. And the universe will sort out which one you're supposed to do. Because the opportunities will come. What you mustn't do is sit and think about which one you want to do. Not do anything. You know what I mean? Thank <laughs> you.